We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. All right, Bill. This is a different Bill, I guess. We a have different Bill because we have Bill C and now we have another Bill C, but it's a different Bill C. All right. Different last names. Bill C. Uh, what are our views on single driver full range speakers? Can they really be full range? And if used with a good subwoofer, should they be preferred over multi-driver, multi-way speakers? All right, first of all, single driver speakers, I, I use them all the time. They're okay. called headphones. Headphones. Headphones, yeah. yes. They're great. I love them. If you're going to sit further away than that, then I don't <laughs> necessarily think they're the, the optimal choice. I've heard many single driver full full range tower speakers. They mm -hmm. usually got a little speaker up here at the very top, and then it's in a huge cabinet with a yep. massive folded horn with a port at the bottom in order to yep. pump out the bass so that you have some bass. What do I think? I think it's stupid. Honestly, I think it's dumb. I think it's a terrible design for a speaker. Can they be good? Can they be full range? No. Uh, technically, yes. But no, not really. Not, not well. Not really. Man, is it difficult in the actual mechanics of making it work. Yeah, so Bill mentioned in his email this this was brought about, this question was brought about because um, over on the HDTV and Home Theater podcast with Ara and Braden, they interviewed uh, one a designer who, you know, makes and sells yeah. single driver full range uh but both just the drivers if you want to diy and and full fully completed speakers yeah uh it was one of the more painful things uh for me to listen to um mainly his repeated comments that speaker design is 90 percent art and only 10 percent science i'm like oh come on man i would um, think that science would play a slightly larger role in speaker yeah, design and unless he's and using how... art to move the driver in and out somehow <laughs> And going on and on about how, you know, measurements of all drivers are completely worthless and all you can do is listen to them. And he's been doing this for 40 years, so he knows. I'm like, it's entirely possible to be wrong about something for 40 years. Um, and Clearly. Yeah. It's also possible uh, to be an so... idiot for 40 years. And this man <laughs> is a proof positive. Well, I, I wouldn't no go quite that is. far. I mean, he's he's doing a thing that appeals to a certain crowd, and that's fine. I'm fine with that. Um, and it is possible to make something that, that sounds kind of decent. But there are there are some things that even he mentioned... He's like, the only way to have a driver that large producing treble is to have it not have very large excursion, ever, right? And if you don't have very large excursion, you then can't you can't get a lot loud. of bass out of it yeah. or a lot of volume, Yeah, which means that you need a very large cabinet in order to amplify the bass that does produce via resonance so he mentioned all of that and that it goes right along with what tom just said when you see them they are these huge towers with huge folded horns to get a lot of resonance in the small amount of bass that they do produce right it's it's kind of the only way now he was mentioning a thing about the larger the single driver the better he thought the imaging of the treble got and that's an interesting comment because the larger the diameter of the driver, the more directional the treble is going to become. That there is no, I don't care whether it's art or science, that's just a fact. When the <laughs> diameter of the thing making the sound wave is larger than the wavelength of the sound wave. It becomes wave, like a parabolic you know, mirror, basically. Yeah, you know, it, it, it just it, focuses all then towards the into center. Into a beam, exactly. Yeah. That's that's what it does. And there's no getting around that. I don't care who you are or what you think you're hearing. That is just a fact of the way that physics of sound waves works so when he's saying you get That's this really excellent waves. yeah Not when, when, you, when he's saying waves. you get this really interesting uh imaging that is actually kind of similar to when you have these huge magnaplanar panels or these huge electrostatic mm -hmm. panels that are very wide and much wider than the high frequencies that are producing and exactly as we've talked about them you get extremely directional beam like treble which means the sound that's hitting your left ear from the left front speaker can actually be very distinct from the sound that's hitting your right ear from the front right speaker because the sound is coming like a beam into your ears, which allows you to have this very pinpoint imaging as long as your head is in a vice, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as you move your head even a inch, 
suddenly that imaging collapses because you're no longer getting this beam of sound into one ear and this beam of sound into the other ear. It's almost like wearing headphones. Right. Or so, you just wear headphones. There's always that option. Yeah. I mean, just to throw that out there. On top uh, of that, though, if you look at any traditional driver that uses a voice coil, and the ones that this gentleman was talking about uh, are traditional speaker cones that use a voice coil, if you look at the impedance curve of any voice coil-based driver, you'll see starting at the lowest point that it plays, it the impedance will swing way up, and then it'll drop right down to the nadir, to the very lowest point that that impedance goes. And then it'll slowly rise, and then it'll turn into a hockey stick at the end and shoot way up. Mm -hmm. Every voice coil driver exhibits that impedance curve. And the part that you use is in between where it's relatively flat. Right. That's the section of frequencies that get used in any multi-way speaker driver because you don't want this crazy dip down at the bottom that's going to demand a lot from your amplifier then you don't want it shooting way up to these tremendously high impedances at the bottom and the top either and then below that point you have a real problem you start to get some really funky response below that so when you try to use a single driver of any size to produce all the way from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz you're going to run if it's a voice coil based driver you're going to run into this impedance problem which gets back to well then we better feed it very little power and have it move very little otherwise we're going to run into amplifier problems that's right how and he was even saying how they at his company they were forced to start selling their own amplifiers because people were having difficulty finding amplifiers to drive their speakers properly <laughs> the only demonstration i have ever flat out walked out of was a single <laughs> driver i mean the speaker started playing and i stood up it was atrocious it wasn't necessarily the speaker's fault mm. it was a very very scratchy terrible vinyl recording the guy had spent 15 minutes telling us about this magical driver that he had gotten from this guy and this cabinet that's so beautifully finished and blah, 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 and just went on and on and on and he put this thing on and it was just like <laughs> <laughs> and before the music started i was like nope i'm out and it was, you know the driver I'm talking about. It's got like this, uh, it's a, it's kind of like, a, it's a very tan material for the cone. Mm. And it's got like this little hat thing that goes around like the dust cap. Uh, oh, it's probably a little wizard cone in there to give you a little bit more trouble response. That's right. And it's got a, a, a couple of, th it's not a big driver, but I've mm. seen these things before in high end things. And apparently they, they don't make them anymore or something, or they're very hard to get, they're very expensive. <laughs> Whatever. It's. Yeah. Th okay, Bill. The answer to your question, you know, should they be preferred over multi-driver, multi-way speakers? I, I cannot see a reasonable reason why you would. If no. you want flat frequency response and uh, high fidelity reproduction of your source material, you are best off in a multi-speaker, multi-driver speaker arrangement. And that is simply because of what Rob said. You're using the best part of the speaker and you're using crossovers to get rid of the rest of the garbage right. that's there. Now, the, give... cross, the crossover is an interesting piece of this puzzle. Right. Because when you are starting out building your own speakers for the first time, the thing that most people, unless you had some engineering experience, you don't know how to build your own crossover. No. Right? Now, maybe, maybe you just get it in a kit. Okay, that's fine. Or maybe you use an external digital crossover, like you program a mini DSP to be a crossover. That's an easier thing to get done now. Right. Um, but that would mean you need a separate amplifier for each driver if you're doing it digitally. So that adds a little bit more complexity. So it's the complexity of having a crossover. It's much easier to build your first speaker cabinet, put in one driver, connect the speaker binding post to it, and that's it. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's an easy design to wrap your head around and to construct yourself. And for Aura's part, where he built his own cabinets, gorgeous looking cabinets out of some like uh, reclaimed barn wood. Right. So really mm -hmm. beautiful cabinets that he made himself and then use this simple design, single full range driver. But he was using them as desktop speakers where he's never sitting more than three feet away from them. Right. So output capability and amplifier wattage and all that isn't a challenge in that setting. And again, 
it's a little bit like headphones, right? <laughs> so, you know, there, there are these settings where I don't have a huge problem. And look, some of the most popular speakers in the world are single full range drivers. That would be Bose. But, you know, no highs, no lows because you're using a single two and a half inch driver to try and produce the full frequency range. And it can't right. do it. Right. So these, these are all things. I'm not saying there's no time to use a single full range driver, but Computer the claim that was being... Time. Yeah. Yeah. The claim that was being made in that interview that this is the pinnacle, the only way to get realistic. And I mean, he went, I mean, he literally said at one point that this is the, the guy who was being interviewed literally said at one point, I don't know why it sounds this way. I think it's because the driver is physically closer to the size of the instrument. I was like, oh, we're whoa. going back to that again. Whoa, dude. Whoa. Because Which I mean, first instrument? of all, uh, he was talking about uh, like a guitar. How's the uh, driver? I, how big is this driver that he's? Oh, using? because he's he's got fifteen inch full range drivers. Oh my god! Right. So he was like, it's, "I'm like, well, it's not closer to the size of the string that actually is producing the <laughs> waves. <laughs> You're saying it's closer to the size of the body that resonates as a hollow cavity." I, okay. What? Uh, there there were comments like that that, like I said, it was difficult for me to even listen to and get through that whole interview because just like, oh, come on, why, dude? I mean, just stick to the facts. That's fu you make. He doesn't have facts. Single... He's got art. Right, right. But, I mean, you make single full-range drivers. That's fine. That's a fine business to be in. There are applications for which to use them. That fine, There are but people why... who will buy them. Yeah, but... but why color it with all this nonsense and saying that speaker design is 90% art? It's like, because... well, then then that, that just, well, it also, it sounds like 40 years in, you don't know how to design a crossover and you don't know how to do the science. And that's fine hire someone who does or stick to what you know he's stuck to what he what he knows that's fine but i mean if you were to talk to dennis murphy or david fabricant or something like that these guys who are ep experts in crossover design why aren't they using single full range drivers in their speaker designs it's like well because they spent a lot of time learning how to design really good crossovers so that they could use drivers within the parameters of where that driver works most linearly rather than trying to expand a driver beyond where it works linearly because it's difficult to design the crossover or the filter to do that. This is all marketing is all this is. Sure. He's got to say the th these things the way he says them. He's got to use his flowery language just like audiophiles always do because they can't sell you on the science because the science isn't there. <laughs> right. <laughs> they have to sell you on the, the, the dream, the promise. <laughs> This right. is magical because it is, and this is why no no one else is. We, this is a lost art. You know, this is a lost art. All right, don't drink any Kool Aid this guy gives you. Don't eat anything out of his little candy jar. Who <laughs> knows what what he's got that laced with? Just walk away. Now, yeah, like like you said, there are many people out there who want this type of speaker, and, and hey, that's good for them. They want something unique that nobody else has, mm -hmm. and that's fine and maybe they have a they really like them and i'm okay with that too just like the vinyl guy earlier i mean don't come to me and tell me that this this thing whatever this thing might be be it vinyl or single driver speaker or whatever is the best thing ever because and you don't you <laughs> can't explain of it situation regardless yeah. of use case <laughs> yeah don't come to me and tell yeah. me that because i'm gonna say why and your answer can't be it just is Mm. All right, because guess what? I don't take that crap from my kids. I ain't taking it from you, especially you who's <laughs> supposed to be here 40 years doing this thing. If your best answer is it just is and I can't explain why, but it just is, then right. I'm sorry, sir. Go to school, read well, a book. The, the advice you know. on how to evaluate them, too, and, and, you know, the classic thing of, oh, make sure you have really high quality recordings with, you know, full Vinyl. range in there. I'm like, no, test tones, sweeps. That's how you evaluate whether the speaker is linear or not. It's, it's really cut and dry, which is why they don't recommend it, right? <laughs> it's yeah. really cut and dry. You listen to a full frequency range sweep, and that'll tell you right quick whether or not that speaker is producing everything linearly or not. And of okay, course these are. It drops completely off. You're like, listen, it's either the room or the speaker. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure it's the speaker speaker since it happened like 15 times in the upper frequencies so the the the, the sweep starts but we don't hear it for three seconds that's problem that's problem right I mean, there you know he, he was right that there there is no industry-wide standard mm -hmm. for measuring uh for like this is the target that all speakers should have absolutely there's no industry-wide standard but to say that we don't have viable science to measure 
this stuff. I mean, like, did you have you just never heard of the NRC and all the research that Harmon has done and all the other companies that have used the NRC's related? Let me introduce you to a friend of mine named Herb at Cross Spectrum Labs. He's going to hook you up with something <laughs> called a microphone. It's like an ear, but you plug it into a computer that's smarter right. than you are. But then again, so are many rocks. So let's just move on. All right, I'm enough without this guy. Let's get this yeah, Want your question answered? Send it to question at avrant.com. Is A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.